Hello, welcome to Big Picture Monday. My name is Callie Black here with this quick video that you need in order to start this week's readings and feel like you totally understand and you're totally confident moving forward with rocking Isaiah chapters 40 through 49. This is week three out of five studying Isaiah and they're all consecutive chapters. We're not skipping anything in the reading that we're studying this week, chapters 40 through 49. So in this video, I'll tell you the few chapters that we did skip before this, what we missed, what to look out for, especially some themes um, and some little tips and tricks that might help you with better understanding. Now, real quick, if you've ever watched these Big Picture Monday videos and you've thought, I wish this was all written down somewhere, I would love to be able to refer to it in written form. Um, I do that. I do that in my Big Picture Little Picture study guides. I have done it all year long for Old Testament. Um, I have done it for the past couple years as well. Um, these are my favorite things to create. This is really the bulk of what I do. And my fourth quarter study guide that covers all your weeks from October through December is available now. Two ways to get it. You can either get it on Amazon if you want this beautiful book, a book just like this shipped to your front door. Um, you can head to Amazon. I'll drop the links um, below or in my bio, or you can always search Cali Black Study Guide. That brings it up as well. Or if you want a digital download to keep on your tablet or to print out the pages that you want, you can head to my website, comefollowmestudy.com and grab your uh, study guide for the next three months. This is literally what I do. Um, like when we study Hosea and Joel <laughs> in a few weeks, I give you little bullet points. I keep it nice and easy, but I also give you information. Like what is the context with Hosea? What were themes that he taught about? What about Joel? What was his historical context? What are themes that he taught about? I give all these little chapter summaries and reminders of where we are. And then I also include spiritual questions so that you can then write and record and dive into each week's um, readings. Anyways, those are available now for purchase. You're going to need them one week from today today because according to Come Follow Me, next week is already the first week of October since we hit October at the end of the week. Um, so you need it one week from today for our fourth week of Isaiah that starts in my fourth quarter study guide available on Amazon and my website. Okay, let's talk about Isaiah chapters 40 through 49. So last week we stopped with chapter 35. So we do skip 36 through 39. And the reason we skip it is because Isaiah tells a story, and we already learned about this story back in 2 Kings. This is when Isaiah was the prophet, and King Hezekiah was the king of Judah. King Hezekiah was the righteous king of Judah. He really did a lot of good stuff. And if you remember, these are a couple things that Isaiah talked about. The Assyrians had come to try and conquer Judah, and they had surrounded Jerusalem, and, and they had sent some leaders in to say some really blasphemous things about God to um, all the people living there in Judah. And Hezekiah was so sad about this, and he went to Isaiah, the prophet, and Isaiah said, listen, ignore them. <laughs> That's basically what he said. Like, don't worry about the Assyrians. The Assyrians came and were about to attack. And Isaiah told Hezekiah, don't do anything. And King Hezekiah listened. He listened to the prophet and an angel came and destroyed all of the Assyrian armies in one night. Um, and then we also learn about the story. King Hezekiah was getting old. He was kind of on his deathbed, but he prayed and he asked for the Lord to lengthen his life. And Isaiah took that to the Lord and the Lord said, okay, if that's what Hezekiah wants, he can have that. Um, and then at that time, the son of the king of Babylon, which was this faraway land, he sent, um, the king sent his son, the prince of Babylon, to visit King Hezekiah on his deathbed. And King Hezekiah was like, actually, I'm all better now, but let me give you a tour of all these beautiful things that we own here in Jerusalem, in this beautiful temple, in this palace that King Solomon built. And Isaiah afterwards was like, mm, so got a re revelation now that um, it's going to be Babylon. Babylon is going to be the ones to come and conquer. Uh, so that's what we skip because we learned about those stories when we historically read about King Hezekiah. Uh, but we do start in chapter 40 this week. Chapters 40 through 49 are a series of prophecies. So these are not so stories um, that we're learning about. It is more prophecies from Isaiah. These ones really focus on the main themes of the Lord will always save and try his covenant people. So you're going to see that Isaiah gives lots of examples of the Lord trying his people, like giving them trials, giving them things that they have to deal with, and then ultimately saving them and extending that mercy 
always, always extending that mercy, but especially at the end, ultimately saving them from, from terrible fates when they turn toward him. So those are the themes you want to look for as you're going through this. Remember, Isaiah is living about 150-ish years before, before Judah is going to be conquered by Babylon. <laughs> so this is all, these are all things that Isaiah is saying about the future and they haven't happened yet. But now for us, we can look back and be like, well, yeah, of course Babylon captured Judah. But at the time Isaiah was giving these prophecies, this hadn't happened yet. Just want to reiterate that, that these are beautiful prophecies and true prophecies of the future. And then of course, for us, we can find historical meaning, but we can also find meaning in the future for us as well. Um, and in our own spiritual lives and what it looks like to be tried and to be saved. Um, one more thing of context that's going to help you as you study this week. So we're going to talk a lot about Babylon and Judah, which can literally mean Babylon coming to conquer Judah. It can also spiritually mean our trials, all that kind of stuff. But you're also going to see that the, <laughs> the phrase or the name of the Chaldeans, C-H, but it's pronounced with the hard K, um, the Chaldeans or Chaldea, that is the same as Babylon, Babylonians. Okay, so just... They are used interchangeably. It's also like another name for the Assyrians because the Assyrians were sometimes involved in that as well. Um, but basically when you see like the Chaldeans are doing this and the Chaldeans came and conquered this and they were taken into Chaldea, it's Babylon. Just substitute that with Babylon and the Babylonians in your head. Um, and it's the same exact thing just to kind of help you feel confident as you're moving forward. It's the people who capture Judah. They capture the covenant people. Um, they are a substitution for the wickedness and the worldliness around us. Okay, let's dive into a little bit more now of each chapter uh, that we're studying and how those themes are kind of presented in these prophecies that Isaiah gives. So let's start with chapter 40. Um, this is really big on how the Lord comforts his people. The Lord comforts his people. Um, he is a shepherd who works gently with people and then he will also give people strength when they need it. Uh, so that gentle guidance and giving them strength. In chapter 41, um, as Israel serves each other, the Lord will also serve Israel. So the covenant people need to be serving each other. Um, but man has done absolutely nothing compared to what the Lord can do for us. Again, that theme that Isaiah loves to draw on of pointing us back towards God and making us realize how unimportant we are in the grand scheme of things and that we need to rely on God even more. Uh, chapter 42, it talks about the servant. The servant is Jesus Christ, the Savior. So replace that in your mind as you go through this. But it talks about how the servant will be gentle and kind. The servant created the earth, so we should praise him. And then God is pleased with those who are righteous, and he wants everyone to get rid of their idols. That's another theme that you'll see a lot in these chapters and next week's chapters as well, is God is constantly pleading with the people to get rid of their other idols that are taking up their time. Chapter 43, the Lord will be with us in our trials, right? He's trying us, but he's not leaving us alone. He will be with us as he tries us. Um, he has given us his name. He will be Israel's savior and he will forget their sins. They will, he will forget Israel's sins if Israel turns toward him. Chapter 44, the Lord is the only God that we should care about. We should get rid of all of our false idols, <laughs> In case you hadn't caught on to that message yet, um, all our all of the false idols around that we surround ourselves with are completely meaningless. But the Lord will forgive us of our sins, and He will redeem us. Isaiah chapter forty five. Um, this is a fascinating chapter because it mentions a guy named Cyrus. Now you may or may not remember this. This is from a couple months ago when we were studying the books of. Um, the end of 2 Kings and Ezra and Nehemiah, when we were studying those books um, a few months ago, uh, there was a king named Cyrus. King Cyrus was the Persian king. Now, after Babylon captured Judah, this is in the future of Isaiah's time, right? But after Babylon did capture Judah and take them away, Babylon itself was then conquered by the Persians. Do you remember this? This is why when we talk about Esther, we talk about she was the, like the queen of the Persians and she was with the Persian king. That's because the Persians now ruled where Babylon was. Because of course, 
the Babylonians, the Chaldeans were not righteous people. And so even though they were allowed to conquer Judah, they themselves were also conquered. Um, so the king who gave a lot of these Jews who were in exile in Babylon, which is now Persia slash Babylon, um, king Cyrus was the king who gave them permission to go back to Jerusalem to start rebuilding the temple. Remember that? There was a king. His name was King Cyrus. Well, as you read in chapter 45, Isaiah prophesies about a guy named Cyrus and that a guy named Cyrus will be able to bless the people of Judah. Now, that and that's what this chapter is about. Cyrus will be able to bless the people of Judah. The Lord has prepared a way for everything that's going to happen and everyone needs to turn towards him. Now, interestingly enough, so Isaiah writes this prophecy 150 years later, Babylon comes and captures Judah. Um, a couple kings later, Persia comes and conquers Babylon itself. There are kind of some some stories. This is not scripture. This is not doctrine. But there are stories out there that um, King Cyrus, the Persian king, had a scribe who read to him these prophecies from Isaiah, from this old Jewish prophet from 100 years ago. And it talked about Cyrus and it mentioned his name and that softened the king's heart and made him more willing to allow the Jews to return back to Jerusalem to build their temple. Again, that is not substantiated, but I just think it's a fascinating little connection there um, that that is a tradition that many Jews believe in. Um, so interesting little connection in chapter 45. Moving on to chapter 46, um, false idols are meaningless and we should not be turning to them for anything. They are nothing compared to the Lord. The Lord is ready to bring salvation to Israel. Chapter 47, remember that when you see the Chaldeans or Chaldea, think Babylon in your head. Um, Babylon thinks that they will last for forever, but they don't recognize that they're trusting in nothing that actually lasts. They are going to be destroyed. No one will save them. Babylon will fall. Chapter 48. Um, this one is interesting because this is also quoted in the Book of Mormon in first chapter, first Nephi chapter 20, first Nephi chapter 20. Um, and this talks about, this is like the main point that Isaiah is making. He talks about how Israel will be the refined in this furnace of affliction. The Lord has always revealed his plans to the prophets so we can look to the prophets to know what's going on, but people are not listening, but the Lord will comfort Israel when they keep the commandments and Israel is commanded to leave Babylon. This one, of course, is going to be more familiar to you because it's from the Book of Mormon, but also has some really powerful themes um, about leaving Babylon, turning to the Lord and the purpose of our trials. And then finally, chapter 49 in Isaiah is also in the Book of Mormon in 1 Nephi chapter 21. Um, and Isaiah laments that he hasn't been able to change many hearts with his message. He knows that he has not been as successful as he would like during his lifetime, of course. Um, he feels that it's all been in vain. But the Savior promises that he will never forget the work that, he do, that we do and that he will always work with us. Israel will be gathered together. And that is the hopeful promise that the Savior gives to Isaiah that I think is cool that we are now making sure that that promise happens as we help to gather Israel. Okay, I hope you caught on to all those themes that you're going to see this week. Again, these are not stories this week from Isaiah. It is just a bunch of prophecies. But look for those themes over and over again of the Lord trying his people and the purpose of those trials but then the Lord comforting and redeeming his covenant people. And then also those warnings about turning away from all idols and other things that are meaningless, that are taking up our time, um, powerful messages over and over. I think my personal focus question for this week is going to be about this idea. It kind of started in Isaiah 40 about the Lord is a gentle teacher. And I love that idea because he's gentle, but he also teaches. He's not just permissive, like, do whatever you want, you guys. I'm nice. He's gentle as he teaches these lessons to me. So I want to think in my life, when have I felt him be a gentle teacher and teach me the things that I need to know in very kind and loving ways? And what can I look forward in the future? All right. Have a great week this week studying our third installment of Isaiah. Remember that my study guide is available on Amazon or on my website, comefollowmestudy.com. This will take you through the last three months of the year as we dive into all of these 
prophets and random prophets that we study at the end of the Old Testament, which have great teachings to teach us. I'll walk you through it when we get a time. All right, have a great week and happy studying.